What's going on guys, this is Rob, and we are back with another episode of our Beyond Omega Level series, where we break down the most powerful characters in comics in terms of their origins and powers. And this week, we are venturing to the demonic corner of the Marvel Universe and discussing one of the many versions of the devil that Marvel has given us, Mephisto. So, Mephisto was created by Stan Lee and John Buscema and first appeared in the Silver Surfer number three in 1968. Now, the inspiration for Mephisto is a demonic character from German folklore called Mephistopheles who is basically an agent for the devil who facilitates a deal between his master and the hero of the story, a figure named Faust, which of course is done in exchange for the hero's soul. Now, as for Mephisto's in-continuity origin, we don't really know the exact details, because after all, the thing Mephisto is most known for is his dishonesty. But there are a few different possible origins that have been offered over the years. For instance, Mephisto told Thanos his origin was tied to an all-powerful entity that once possessed all the Infinity Stones, and that he not only created that entity, but also destroyed it when it realized how evil Mephisto was. However, once that entity willed itself out of existence, Mephisto was resurrected as the rest of the Marvel Universe was created. Another version of Mephisto's origin centers on the Elder Gods who ruled Earth eons ago. Once one of the Elder Gods, a tomb, forces the rest of them to basically leave Earth or else be consumed, the residual energy of the Elder Gods become the Hell Lords of the Marvel Universe, including Mephisto. And yet another possible origin for Mephisto is that he was actually the first deviant the Celestials ever created. Created. So, like I said, lots of possible origins, but we don't really know for sure which one is true. Now, as for his powers, Mephisto is one of those characters whose powers are so vast that it's hard for them to be quantified into a list, as he can pretty much do whatever he wants. So, with that in mind, as we go through his powers, keep in mind that this is by no means an exhaustive list. But first, although we aren't really certain of the specifics of his origin, one thing we do know is that Mephisto has been around for eons, and that's because he's immortal. Even in instances when his physical body is killed, Mephisto will always be born again within his own realm. Now, most of Mephisto's powers stem from the fact that he is a master of manipulating magic, which is why he frequently finds himself at odds with another of Marvel's most powerful magic wielders, Doctor Strange. Now, one way he frequently uses this ability is by shape-shifting into a variety of forms, which he's quite adept at doing, having been able to fool the Silver Surfer into thinking he was Frankie Ray, also known as Nova, the Herald of Galactus, who, of course, is a character with which the Silver Surfer has extensive history and knows quite well. And this is only one example of Mephisto's ability to create convincing illusions, as doing so is crucial to his ability to trick others, which is pretty much his bread and butter since he's basically a demon and all. Now, Mephisto is also able to look into different realities, as we see when he tells Peter Parker the various outcomes that await him in different realities when he's trying to convince him to make a deal to save his Aunt May, which of course we'll come back to later on. He can also influence the behaviors of others, like when he basically caused everybody living on a city block to start committing crimes like theft, vandalism, and arson. He can also cause people to forget everything they know and basically melt their brains. Furthermore, because he is such an adept magic user, he can grant magical abilities to others. And one famous instance of this is when he imbued Victor Von Doom's mother with vast magical potential, but did not grant her control over those powers. And this incident with Dr. Doom's mom is really typical of how Mephisto's dealings usually play out. So what happens is that Cynthia Von Doom, whose people are basically nomadic, summons Mephisto to strike a deal to give her people a permanent place to live. Mephisto gives her magical powers, and she goes to the castle of the Baron that ruled over the land, and then delivers an ultimatum to give her people the land they deserve, or she'll simply destroy his castle. When one of the guards laughs at her, she fires a bolt of magic at him, which basically mortally wounds him. But before he dies, he returns the favor, and Cynthia wanders into the woods and then dies herself, with Mephisto claiming her soul. Now, another famous example example of Mephisto's underhanded dealings is when he cures Johnny Blaze's adopted father of cancer in exchange for Johnny's soul, but kills him days later in a motorcycle accident. Now, he then bonds Johnny's soul to another demon known as Zarathos and curses him to an eternity as the Ghost Rider. And so to circle back to our earlier mention of Mephisto's dealings with Peter Parker, in a particularly famous storyline called One More Day that Spider-Man fans just can't seem to let go of, Mephisto heals Aunt May from a terminal illness, but it comes at the cost of altering Peter's timeline so that he and Mary Jane were never married. And in fact, Mary Jane forgets that Peter Parker Spider-Man and Harry Osborn comes back to life. And from this, we see that Mephisto is capable of actually altering reality itself. Now, although Mephisto typically prefers to avoid physical confrontation in favor of defeating his opponents by outsmarting or deceiving them, that does not mean he is not formidable in battle. We don't have a lot of instances of Mephisto showing his physical strength, but one such instance is when he was seemingly able to knock out She-Hulk 
simply by backhanding her, which really isn't that impressive when you think about it. Now, on another occasion, he was able to handle an Avengers team of Captain America, Wonder Man, Black Knight, and Tigra without breaking a sweat, even when he was in a weakened state. And Mephisto has also been able to use his magical abilities to produce a powerful blast of energy that was strong enough to one-shot the Silver Surfer, which is incredibly impressive given how powerful the Silver Surfer is. Now, in terms of durability, Mephisto can really only be harmed by weapons of a magical or divine nature. He survived blasts from the Silver surfer Doctor Strange and the Human Torch, who can produce as much energy as a supernova. Another important thing to consider is that Mephisto rules over his own realm, which he typically refers to as Hell, and which looks pretty much exactly the way you would think Hell would look, and it also serves the same purpose, to basically torment and torture souls. But the biggest reason why this is important is that within his own realm, Mephisto's powers are amped to the point that he's basically omnipotent. The longer he's away from his own realm, the weaker he becomes, hence the reason why, sure, he fought the Avengers and he defeated them, but it's not that impressive in the grand scheme of things in comparison to what he can do. So he's battled Thor and survived being pummeled with Mjolnir and remarks that Thor would never be able to defeat him as he could never truly perish. And Mephisto was actually able to grow to gigantic proportions and literally crush Thor like a bug with his bare hand. He also survived a blast from Franklin Richards, who's one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe, but it should be noted that this was when Franklin was a child, so he wasn't really at his full potential. Still, given the fact that Franklin Richards is a universal constant and a universal reality warper, this is still a pretty incredible feat. Now, the list of things Mephisto has been able to do in his own realm is really too long to list, but just to go over a few, he was able to take out the Silver Surfer and Doctor Strange, and we're talking classic Doctor Strange, which is way more powerful than the current version. But most impressive is by far the fact that Mephisto was able to battle Galactus to a stalemate. Now, Galactus is one of the most powerful entities in all of Marvel Comics and feeds on planets for his nourishment, and in fact, he had just fed on a planet before fighting Mephisto. So not only does Mephisto match him in terms of power, but the battle between the two of them threatened to tear apart all of reality had they not been stopped. You know what? We should cover that story. Mephisto fights Galactus. Yeah, we need to cover that. That's the most clickbait title ever. So just by that feat alone, we can tell that Mephisto is well beyond Omega level and one of the most powerful villains in Marvel Comics. So with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.